If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. While 2014's Lords of the Fallen was one of the earliest to take a stab at recreating from software's lightning in a bottle, it didn't quite hit that high mark. Nearly a decade and about a million Souls-like copycats later, there's perhaps no better time for its follow-up to take a second swipe. And thankfully, this new Lords of the Fallen confidently lands its strike. <laughs> Its dual world is absolutely awesome to explore. Build crafting is diverse and complex, and combat is so smooth and satisfying that I'm willing to forgive all the ways it cribs from its contemporaries. Some pretty severe performance issues and bugs, as well as disappointingly easy boss fights, means this latest thrust isn't quite a fatal blow, but even so, I expect to spend many more hours impaling enemies and exploring every nook of its cleverly split world. <laughs> Lords of the Fallen is yet another action RPG Souls-like, complete with an unsettling fantasy setting, other players invading your game, and of course, lots of dying. A lot is borrowed from FromSoft classics, but there's also quite a bit of unique stuff to get excited about too. That includes things like some super cool dual reality shenanigans or a nifty magical lamp that lets you flay the souls right out of your enemies. Those who played the original Lords of the Fallen will definitely hear NPCs talk about some familiar setting lore. The time of Adir's righteous return. Is nigh. Or see really cool and recognizable sights like this giant outstretched hand of a fallen god in the distance. But this is essentially a reboot rather than a sequel. The fresh story it tells using refurbished bits is much better than its predecessor too, with a world that feels much more fleshed out. There's some interesting characters here and there, and some cool lore as you meet various factions that you can side with or work against. You know full well the agony Galinda can inflict on you. Even if that stuff sometimes feels buried under a mountain of generic dark fantasy gobbledygook. Though Lords of the Fallen certainly borrows a lot from its genre peers in this way, its biggest original idea is also its best. Axiom, the physical land most people perceive, lies atop this ghostly world of dark abominations and creepy eyeballs called Umbral, which you can swap to using a magic lantern. As you run around killing bosses and kicking scrubs off of ledges, you'll need to navigate both, which adds a really novel new way to explore the environment. For example, a broken bridge might block your progress in the normal world, but be crossable in Umbral. This mechanic has enormous impact on nearly every aspect of Lords of the Fallen, from combat where normally imperceivable enemies become a major threat when you enter Umbral, to exploration, since each area essentially has two versions, warranting multiple runs through the same section to see what you missed. It's a shame, though, that Lords of the Fallen doesn't quite seem capable of supporting its cross-dimensional ambitions from a technical standpoint, as it suffers from some pretty serious performance issues. Even with my GeForce RTX 4090 GPU and Ryzen 9 7950X 3D CPU, I encountered stuttering and dropped frames on a regular basis, especially after prolonged sessions, and those problems were shared in some form or another by everyone I played with. It's especially frustrating when lost frames lead to taking hits I otherwise may have avoided, or when my co-op partners got killed after their game turned into a slideshow during multiplayer. I'm not usually one to whinge about performance benchmarks or less than perfect frame rates, but these were so consistent and impossible to ignore that it was like eating a delicious meal with a severe toothache. Thankfully, Lords of the Fallen's otherwise lovely areas are still a ton of fun to explore when its frame rate manages to behave, from the fiery ashes of the city of Kalrath to the treacherous steps of a monastery in the mountains. Level design is some of the best of the genre in recent memory, with interesting and often breathtaking environments, tons of secrets to discover, and loads of unique enemies to fight, introduced one at a time via mini-boss fights throughout the roughly 40-hour campaign. 
taking down armies of wretched skeletal abominations is a lively whirlwind of blades and flails being swung and parried, making it play more smoothly than the vast majority of its peers, even if that dance feels extremely conventional at this point. You can be a brawny bruiser wielding the old reliable sword and board, this quick and precise Bloodborne dude, or a variety of ranged magic users with cool but by the numbers abilities like covering levels in fire and lava or blessing you and your allies with health regenerating effects. It's also great that many of the areas you'll fight your way through are legitimately challenging, often filled with elite enemies who swarm you with devastating attacks in claustrophobic environments that have numerous ways to get yourself killed. Really the only issue is that enemies are as dumb as a bag of hair, which isn't exactly a unique problem in the genre, but it's always amusing to see these morons try to figure out how to navigate the world's geometry only to stand in place as you stab them repeatedly. Not content with just being awesome for exploration, your magical lamp and its relationship to the parallel umbral realm is also quite useful in combat, primarily because you can use its soul flay ability to rip out an enemy's soul, stopping them in their tracks, and providing ample time to dish out damage. Also, some enemies will have supernatural resistance that makes them nigh invincible, the only remedy being using your lamp to cast light on nearby hidden eyeballs to strip them of that protection. Finding ways to play with the dual reality swapping during combat really drives home just how dope that mechanic is. Obviously, No Souls Like would be complete without epic boss fights against disgusting monstrosities, and Lords of the Fallen has some cool ones. Unfortunately, unlike the levels preceding them, they're not very challenging at all. Every boss comes at you with slow and telegraphed moves, surprisingly reasonable health bars, and plenty of breaks in the action to heal up thanks to the simple AI, making death a pretty rare occurrence against them. It's still entertaining to take on enormous beasts despite them being pushovers, but even some of the more unique fights seem subpar compared to the bar set by recent Souls likes. There's also just a pretty sizable layer of jank around this otherwise awesome package. I saw a few game crashes, had cool combat encounters ruined when enemies got stuck helplessly in the environment, was locked out of certain button commands like blocking for stretches of time, and more. Sometimes Lords of the Fallen has original Dark Souls energy in a pretty unflattering way. Playing with a friend can make some of those rough edges even more noticeable, since it introduces other questionable quirks, like how co-op partners are tethered to the host and get teleported if they stray too far, which is accompanied by a loading screen. But those loading screens often take just long enough for the host to have traveled out of sight again by the time you load back in, leading to yet another loading screen. But teaming up with a friend is still a good time. And what I've played of New Game Plus so far has me and my squad quite excited to go back through some of the areas and enemies, with new lore, a whole new skill tree to experiment with, and of course, more difficult baddies to slay. That increased difficulty hasn't made any of the boss fights very challenging yet, which is a bummer, but the stretches between them are worth it on their own. Lords of the Fallen is a great Souls-like, and its killer new idea of swapping between two versions of the world to solve puzzles and slay enemies is an excellent twist to set it apart from the pack. That concept is unfortunately hamstrung a bit by numerous, highly annoying technical challenges and weak boss fights. But awesome explorable areas and fantastic build crafting more than make up for those shortcomings. If, like me, you're a sucker for a quality action RPG, even amid a clear overabundance of them, then this reboot is well worth your time. For more, check out our reviews of Forza Motorsport and Assassin's Creed Mirage. And for everything else, stick with IGN.